Praise our God. Listen, I know that you are normally ready to see me on a Friday night. So some of you are probably even checking your calendar right now to find out what in the world is going on. We come to you tonight the same way Jesus is going to come to you in a time when you think not. Prophet? My God, tonight, Prophet, I'm calling you Prophet Bloomer. Because right, <laughs> <please. laughs> you, you started all this. It was a word that came out of your mouth that there needs to be a prophetic college. And now we are looking six months or so back and watching what God is doing as he's begun to assemble prophetic voices around the nation and the curiosity is picking up momentum. Absolutely. And so tonight's show is gonna be tremendous. Yes. You know, we just celebrated Passover and we're on our way to Pentecost. And there are many of you that have not had the opportunity to sow your from Passover to Pentecost seed. During this, throughout the night tonight, as you sow your seed, the prophetic rain is going to fall on that seed and cause harvest to take place. Ah, no, but, but, we don't want to play any games with you tonight. You must get your seed into the soil. Tonight is a prophetic night. Now the scriptures teach us to everything there's a time and a season and a purpose under the heavens. This is your time to get your seed in the ground. And so the Lord spoke to us, he spoke to my heart, he spoke to prophet's heart to put together a prophetic package for you that's going to release some things in your life. And it's going to be called the prophet's portion from Passover to Pentecost. We're moving from the Passover season into Pentecost. And what does that mean? That means when you begin to sow, the first seed is $52. Now why 52? How many weeks are there in a the year? Five, two. 52 weeks in a year. How many days are in the week? Seven days in a week. If I look at five and two from 52, I see the number seven again. But not only that, 52 weeks of uncommon favor is getting ready to show up when you sow the $52 seed tonight. Uncommon favor, uncommon favor, uncommon favor, uncommon favor. This room is packed with prophets and apostles on tonight. It's a different night. I already sense angels moving in, angels coming from your past, angels that are assigned to you in your present and angels from your future visiting your presence tonight. It's very, very important. This is a prophetic night where yokes will be destroyed in your life. So the first seed is $52, $52. And for many of you, the $52 will open the heavens up over them. Yes. You should just pick up your pen right now and start writing it right now. 855-730-WORD, 855-730-WORD. That's, that's, that's the seed that the Lord is speaking to you to sow. But the prophets, the prophetic seed that you're gonna sow is a little bit different. The $111.11 for Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 11. May that the Lord God of our fathers bless you a thousand times more. And I want you to know tonight, you're getting ready to be blessed a thousand times more. A thousand times more than you are. A See, this is getting ready to be a rapid return and guess what? You're going to catch the case of the suddenlies. Jesus, catch, catch the case of the, of the suddenlies. Suddenly you're going to be blessed. Suddenly your sorrows are going to be wiped away. Suddenly your fears are disappearing. Suddenly. So guess, guess what? The blessing is going to come and overtake you, which means it's going to run you down. 855-730-WORD. 855-730-WORD. We're going to go into worship. Yes, we are. And this man of God, tell us who this man of God is. Woo, he's from Nigeria. <laughs> Nigeria. Many years ago, we were sending missionaries to Africa. Now, Africa is sending missionaries to the United States of That's America. True. There's a shift, there's a move. And we have one of the top worship leaders in the country of Nigeria. They're watching all in Nigeria. They're, they're logging on. They are part of to see what's about to happen. And so we want to release this powerful man of God, but I don't want to mess his name up. All right, so we want you to get ready right now. Take out your phones. Take your phones out right now. 
and begin to send the message to all of your friends and tell them to watch. The Prophetic College is in assembly. You have heard of it, you heard about it. Now you need to come and witness the conversation tonight. What God will so speak tonight will revolutionize what is about to take place. And are you ready to document the move of God? If you caught it in his infancy, remember the only ones that made it to see Jesus was the wise men and the shepherds. Are you ready to start seeing the infancy of a visitation of God? You're sitting in a moment of history. The glory is here. Sammy Okposo. Come on, everybody, clap your hands in the studio. Come on. We thought we were waiting for the glory, but the glory is here already. And it's inside of you. You are a glory carrier. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. Hallelujah. Hey. The glory is here. Ah, the anointing is here. I can feel it. All of me, oh God, it's overflowing. <laughs> I'm born of God. Oh. Woo. The life of God is in me. Fear has no power over me. Come on, greater is He that's in me. Come on, everybody, clap your hands. The glory is here, oh God, oh God, the anointing is here, come on, I can feel it all over me, and it's overflowing, it's overflowing. See you wave your hands from side to side. If you know the glory is here, is here already in you. Come on. All we gotta do is worship him tonight. Say oh, 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 oh. say oh, my God. Oh, 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 my, my. Say oh.
see there's no power of me because greater is he that's in me. Come on, celebrate Jesus in here. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, wave those hands. Don't stop. It's all about Jesus today. It's all about Jesus today. Hallelujah. The glory is here tonight. I feel it all over me. I feel it in my bones. I feel it at my feet. I wish I had worshipers in the studio tonight who would say, God, it's all about you. It's all about you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 855-730-WORD, 855-730-WORD. The prayer warriors, the prayer counselors are in the prayer room right now and they're waiting to take your call. Listen, whatever you speak into the atmosphere is the thing that is going to shape. And tonight, the prophets are here. If ever there was a time and a day and a moment that we needed to hear from God, and hear from heaven, it is right now. So you're gonna hear about the good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent, the, the, the myths, the misconceptions, all about prophecy and we hope that we can bring some great understanding to you and to this call. Well, you know, Bishop Bloma, I am honored to be here and I want those of you to get on the line now and start calling 855-730-WORD, 855-730-WORD. Let's talk about the prophet's portion right now. A scripture here, Bishop Bloomer, is in Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse number 11. The Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times so many more as ye are and bless you as he hath promised you. I want you to know that God wants to get ready to bless you as he has promised you. I believe tonight that God is opening up the portals of heaven and pouring out a blessing that there is not room enough to receive. And if we can just slide in there, there's a reason why we're asking you to do the $111.11 seed. If I can get you to slide in with that one, if you give me just one more turn, mm. one more chance, mm. one more moment, mm. one more opportunity, mm. one more day, I can call 855-730-WORD. And if I can just come in with the grain of a mustard seed, with that 11111, something will trigger for me because I'm sowing tonight into the prophet's portion. 855-730-WORD. Give a prophet a glass of water and receive the prophet's reward. What is the prophet's reward? The prophet's reward is his prophecy. Let's look at what happened with the little maiden lady that went and brought Naaman to come see the prophet. And Naaman began to give a direction, an insight, a moment, and says, go in depth seven times. And as Naaman operated in the word of the prophet, the leprosy left. Now watch this. If you're not having a conflict with what I'm asking you, then you're gonna miss the miracle on the other end. Mm. Because the conflict, there's gotta be tension and friction around what I'm asking you. And so if the 111 is not even a challenge to you or that doesn't even move you or don't even offend you, then I want to challenge you to do $1,111.11 seed. Wait a minute. Now you jump to $1,000 and $1,111.11 seed. A thousand, Bishop Jordan? Yes, because the seed that makes you scream is the seed that has a reward on the other end of it. My God. You see, uh, Bishop Bloomer, it was when we begin to look at the scripture, the prophet Elijah says to the woman, get me water during a famine. She goes to get the water without a mumbling word. 
So the prophet said, hold it. She didn't even make a sound. It wasn't even a stretch for her. Make me a cake. Man of God, I don't have a cake. I don't have a cake. It is something when the seed irritates you. That's the seed that the blessing is connected with. And tonight's a special edition. Now, we have a whole plan and a whole program, but the Holy Ghost has a program. Because we did not talk about the $1,111.11 seed. That just came up by an inspiration of the Holy Spirit, which means you're watching. There's a, there, there's a floodgate that's ready to open, and you have access to it right now. This is your moment. If I get one more chance, one more moment, just one more day, one more hour, one more minute, something suddenly can start to transfer from heaven's account into my account. You know, those of you that are watching on tonight, you say, you know, um, the program just started and you're, you're asking us to do something. We're not playing any games with you in this particular season. Mm -hmm. the, the, the soil is fertile and it is ready to receive. In the book of Amos, it said, it shall come to pass that a man shall take a seed and place it into the soil. And at the same time, the plowers shall show up. Wow. I, you, you about to have a Jack in the Beanstalk experience. I know it's sort of kind of animated and you know, in fairy tale, but the truth of the matter is this, is that your seed is going to carry you to a level where the goose that lays the golden eggs are. Your money angels are about to be released on your behalf. I promise you. 855-730-WORD, 855-730-WORD, sow that seed. And so we first started off by sharing with you 52, then 111, 11. And now there's some of you who really, really need a miracle, a miracle, because 111 doesn't agitate you enough. Mm. God is speaking. And as you sow your seed, we're going to stand in agreement with you and call your name out over the air. We're going to activate that seed in your life and financial and miracle breakthroughs are going to be your portion on tonight. Yes. And you know, when you begin to look at it, we didn't even plan this, but here you have three amounts, 52, 111, 11, 1,111, and 11 cents. Some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold. Out of court, in a court, holy of holies, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, heaven, earth, hell. Let me tell you something. Your seed tonight will disturb something in hell, bring something from heaven that will impact you here on earth. That one seed, $111 seed, that one seed, that $52 seed, whatever that amount is that the Spirit is calling you to move with, 855-730-WORD. This powerful bishop, I feel the heavens And open. if you have been experiencing a drought in your life or ground that seems to be barren, the Bible declares that Isaac sold in a barren land, in a Ooh. famine that was worse than the famine of his father. Yeah. Mm. And the Bible declares that he sold that seed and reaped in the same year. And then the text says he, go, he grew richer and richer and richer by the day until he became very wealthy. But the blessing wasn't richer, richer, richer or very wealthy. The blessing was that last piece, it says, and he accumulated. The seed that you're going to sow tonight is going to be a seed of accumulation. And the seed of accumulation is against any famine that could ever come close to you. Drought and barrenness and famine cannot harm you because you have accumulated in your storehouse. There are those right now in this moment, in this second, needs to begin to sow your seed, whether it's a 30-fold, a 60-fold, or a 100-fold. You need to sow your seed tonight. And the reason why I'm lingering with this because I can hear God speak. In this moment, God is going to shift things and turn things. He's going to bring that brokenness that you've had between your fathers back together again. The brokenness between mothers and daughters and families, he's going to mend it back together again and reveal unto you the difference between purpose and destiny. And there are people who are in your purpose but are not assigned to your destiny. 
So he's about to move folks out of your life and move folks into your life, but he needs to till the soil so you can have the breakthrough. In the name of Jesus, I curse that which has been cursing you, and I command you in the name of the Lord to rise up, hear the word, and sow the seed tonight in the name of Jesus. While we were speaking, because we're going to talk about Father Ikarabasakobo. We're going to talk about fathers and sons tonight. While we were speaking, uh, 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 talking, and you were talking about it, uh, the, the God of our fathers shall bless you a thousand times more. I don't know uh, 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 the God of my father, but I knew the God of my grandfather. My grandfather was a bishop. It skipped over my father, and then it fell on me. And uh, my father didn't like me. My father was not there for me. And I remember, I tell this real quickly, I remember uh, 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 another network that in, in those days that was doing a fathers and sons things for, 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 for Father's Day. And so I went around trying to get my father to be with me on that Father's Day program. I guess it was wow. my ego working, whatever was happening, and I couldn't find him. So a whole year went by. The next year she did it again and it went by. So on my television program, I bought him a watch from Jacobs and Son and I held the watch up on the television program to try to connect with my father. My sister saw the program. She called me. She said, even if I know where daddy's at, I'm not going to I'm not going to introduce you to him. I'm not going to let you know where he's at. You need to move on. I called my mother. I said, Ma, do you know how I can get in touch with my dad? She said, mm -hmm. She started humming. She never said anything bad. She said, oh, Lord. She started humming. Oh, Jesus. And um, I started looking for my dad. I received a telephone call from this 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 woman who said, my name is Jean and 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 and, and um, I'm your father's girlfriend. Do you remember? Remember me? I said, no, I don't remember you. She said, he used to bring you by when you was a little boy. I didn't remember that. I said, how old was I? She said, about two months old. When I was two months old, he would take me and bring me to his girlfriend's house. And when I came up as a little boy, he, I, I, I never remember my dad living in the house at all. I went and I met with, up with my dad. I spoke to him. We reconnected. I bought him some Air Force Ones and some uh, Levi jeans and plaid shirt. And he lived over on top of the OTB off-track betting in New York City over the gambling. I was wondering where my gambling came from because it was in my seed. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got stuff in us that we don't know that is connected to our dad. I rebuke that tonight in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And long story short, I started fellowship with my father, even started paying his rent, and, and we were in fellowship wow. with each other. And one day he took me out, he asked me to come and see him, I went to see him, and he looked at me, he was in a restaurant, and he says, I, I need you to do something. I said, Dad, anything. I was just happy to have a father. I, didn't, I never had a father, I was happy to have a father. For that, for, 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 for one year, he said, I need you to give me $100,000. Not 1,500, 100,000. I said, I don't have 100,000. If I had, I wouldn't give it to you. He said, oh, you're gonna give me 100,000. I said, I don't have it. He snatched me across that table inside that restaurant and began to beat me like I was two years old. I ran out of the restaurant, down the street, ran down the subway. I forgot that I had actually drove to the restaurant. That's how bad he hit me. When I was on the train, as God would have it, I was inside the train riding by myself and I looked, at the, looked in the glass and it was a reflection of myself. My tooth was knocked out completely out of my mouth, blood running down my face, speckles of blood on my Air Force Ones and in my own voice, I could hear God say this, this is what I've been trying to protect you from. But you want it to be like everyone else. When mother and father forsake you, then the Lord shall take you up. Tonight, the seed that you sow is going to connect you with purpose and with destiny. 855-730-WORD. 855-730-WORD. Go to the phone right now. 30, 60, or 100 fold. You know what God is speaking to you. Do it right now in Jesus' name. 855-7300-WORD. My God, you know, Bishop Bloomer, that story is so moving and I'm thinking about the scriptures that you had just quoted from while well, those of you that are listening, because you might be in a strange season of life. Every one of us, we must understand there's a time and season for everything under the heavens. We don't get to ask for what season we're in. Seasons show up without our permission. We don't get to tell the season to stay longer than it needs to stay or now come. The season shows up and we gotta be ready. But in Genesis chapter 26 and verse one, it says, and there was a famine in the land besides the first famine. So every generation gets a famine. Mm. Every generation gets to participate in a famine. 
Every generation gets to experience a famine. Why is that? Because we've got to discover whether you know how to behave in famine. Ah. And so, and there was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech. So there was a famine for Abraham generation. Mm. Now there's a famine for Isaac's generation. And then the Bible lets us know, and the Lord appeared unto him and said, go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. And so he goes on and sojourn. But then in verse number 12, even in the land where there was famine, then Isaac sowed in that land. I want to know tonight if you can sow in the land when you would say there's famine in my land, there's upset in my land, there's tragedy in my land, there's a condition in my land I just don't understand, and receive in the same year. Now something about when you're sowing in a famine year, I think it activates the suddenlies. Ah. In the same year, a hundredfold, and watch this, the sowing caused the Lord to bless him. Guess what? It's not money that makes you rich. It's not materials that makes you rich. What makes you rich? It's the blessing of the Lord. And when the blessing of the Lord maketh rich, it adds no sorrow. And so tonight, Bishop Bluma, we're going to reach in and talk about some of the things about the fathers. Yes. It's an awakening of the fathers. Yes. And I want everybody to write this down. We are the new ancestors. Act accordingly. My God. Wow. Act like it. We are. We are. We are. We are. We are. We the are. new ancestors. And it's time for us to act accordingly. Your gift will make room for you. You want to get the attention of God and open up the heavens that is above you? Get that seed. 52, 111, 1,100, $100, and $11. And 11 cents. And 11 cents. And watch God do the miraculous. A few months ago, a few months ago, the Lord spoke to me to shift my conference from Warfare Ecology to Intel, Inside National Territories con con uh, um, Exposing Legions. Mm -hmm. And during that conference, I, um, I wanted to bring all of the prophets together, particularly young prophets together, uh, so that we can bring some clarity to the to prophetic. I feel that there's an apostolic uh, anointing on my life, but I don't feel like I'm a prophet. And so I needed to reach out to uh, uh, to pers persons in that area that literally was the masters in those areas. And I reached out to Prophet Jordan. Now we had started this seven years prior with the prophetic summit at, at my church where young prophets came, your, your, yeah. your son was there and, and so on and so forth. Right. Some of the prophets who's in the room here tonight were, 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 were there. And seven years later, the Lord brought it back uh, to us to, uh, to have it. And um, this is pretty much how the, uh, the prophetic uh, college got started. Yes. And with this, we see the gathering. Now watch this. In every visitation that begins, you can tell the mark of a visitation, it starts with an upset. Mm. The purpose of the upset is for the setup. On the day of Pentecost, are these people drunk? Oh, no, 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 that's the upset. This just looks a little off. They're not drunk as you suppose. This is that which was spoken by the prophets. So every visitation starts out with an upset because the upset creates the setup. What's upsetting about a visitation is that you're trying to name it and identify it, and you can't identify it because it is something that is showing up that has no definable points. Wow. Something that is showing up that has no definable points. Yeah, it's just different. It's just different. Uh, you know, you try to attach it to something that you were connected to in the past, but it's not what was past, because if it was the past, then it's the past rolled over into the future. When God does a new thing, he creates an upset. 
And we're in now the generation where we're seeing different types of worship showing up. Yes. Different kind of people coming to the forefront. Yes. Different lifestyles that are being paraded. Yes. We're in an age of up upset. And the upset is God set up. Thus, I didn't ask for this, and neither did you. Never. Never. But now we have the prophetic college. And we're going to be meeting tomorrow. And we're going to be meeting the end of this month. And we're going to continue meeting because God is shaping. We need to go to the prophetic college commercial. And we'll be right back. I am excited. <laughs> Things are about to happen. Amen. Bishop Bernard Jordan and Bishop George Bloomer are assembling a host of prophets in New York, New York, May 29th through the 30th. Register free today at MyPropheticCollege.com. Come to collaborate and participate in this two-day Q&A roundtable with some of the leading prophetic voices in the nation. Get your questions answered concerning their prophetic. Register free today at MyPropheticCollege.com. That's MyPropheticCollege.com. The Word Network is the most dynamic, the most exciting, the most empowering, and the most innovative religious network in the world. We have the music, the ministry, the revelation. And when you help people, then God gives you the joy that only He can give you. The fun. The events. And most importantly, the platforms. We're everywhere you need us to be and more. From satellites to smartphones. The Word Network is committed to broadcasting the good news of Jesus Christ all over the world. Eight five five seven three zero word. Eight five five seven three zero word. Eight five five seven three zero word. This is the time that you are to sow that seed and open the heavens up above you. We've been getting ready to move into uh, a, a segment of the prophetic college. Prophet. My goodness, and um, this segment is um, some young men, young prophets, prophetic voices that are coming to us. Uh, my son, Prophet Joshua Jordan, who is no stranger here. Amen. Uh, Prophet Trevor Walker Jr., Bishop Edward Robinson, Kelvin Thurman, and also um, Pastor Bill. Amen. And uh, we are glad to have them here. And we want to talk a little bit just about social justice. You know, we have, we're in an age right now where people are talking, me too, me too, me too, me too, me too. And we're talking about Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter. I want to ask the question, why is Black Lives Matter in the street and the church is not in the forefront of Black Lives Matter? The Pentecostal church, the spirit-filled, tongue-talking believer. And so we just want to put the question out here, um, not devising an answer or getting an answer, just, just kind of asking the question about, you know, social justice. And um, I guess we want to ask the panel here, what do you think about social justice and the church? Thank you for that question, Master Prophet. Um, one of the first things that came to mind is that the prophet is called to speak truth to power. The prophet as a role within the fivefold ministry is one that is supposed to hold others to account, especially those that are within power, uh, Master Prophet. Amen. Any others? I believe that uh, there is a major issue between the prophetic voice and uh, between the church and uh, the world because the prophet's mouth has been closed. Mm. Uh, we look at Amos. Amos said that he was not a prophet, but because of all the prophet's mouths were closed by their leaders, God called him to speak what he had to say. 
Wow. Any others? The Word of God tells us in Isaiah 117, learn to do good, seek justice, oppress uh, depression, uh, do good by the fatherless. So seek good to, for the fatherless and obey the calls of the widow. Uh, we can march all we want. We can have all these organizations all we want, but until the church and the prophetic voices of the church take a stand on the word of God, there will not be a difference in the world that we see. Amen. I think one of the things that we have to look at, wow. uh, Master Prophet, is the assignment of the prophet is not just to the local assembly. The assignment of the prophet is to the nations. And if you look at the role of the prophet Moses, his prophecy shaped the nation of Israel, shape them in legislation, shape them in behavior, and shape them in culture. So if we just keep prophesying into the church and not prophesying to governments, prophesying to the culture, and making sure that the voices of God is heard, then we're going to have an issue. Amen. Simply put, we have disconnected ourselves from the source of power. Mm. If we go back to the main things, prayer, seeking God, taking a stand on truth, then we can go back, as people say, to the old landmark. If you think about it, we've also become too silent. We've become more political and less spiritual. And whenever you tap into, tap into heaven and gain a divine frame of reference, you'll be able to see the enemy from afar off. And I think the greatest issue as the church in this day and time is that we have misinterpreted and misidentified the true enemy. Mm. The true enemy is not the Republican. The true, identity, the true uh, enemy is not the Democrat. It's not people in government. The true enemy is the spirit of the Antichrist. Mm. And if you notice in this day and time, Laws and everything are being passed that are anti-Christ. Great. We can be silent no more. Amen. He said that we need to return back to prayer. And what I have been seeing is that prayer has been replaced with worship. So we have this whole new worship thing going on. People can worship for hours, but they can't pray for a second. It's very, very, very important. So something cynical is happening in the spirit realm. It is a prayer coup d'etat. It's a coup going on. And it has snatched prayer out. So this new group of people, will, they, 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 they say they have a, 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 a life, a worship lifestyle. Worship is what, what, what they do, but they don't know the word. And the Bible says that man ought to always what? Pray. Men ought to always what? Pray. So then prayer needs to be on the top of the list yes. and not worship. Mm -hmm. I get that. Because prayer is your communication to God, right? Now, looking at this in the day that we are standing in, I'm going to ask you as young men, young black men, how do you see your role in the church and in America today? And what is your vision for the world in the church? I would say that my vision goes back to what Amos 5.24 begins to say. It says, but let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. That word judgment uh, in Hebrew is mishpat, uh, which in the NRSV is translated as justice. I believe it is our role as young men in the body of Christ uh, to speak truth to power, to speak what thus saith the Lord. Um, and there's a difference, there's a distinction between the logos, which is the word of God, and the rhema, which is the living word, the spoken word of God. And so I believe we're called to speak what thus saith the Lord to those that are in power. Amen. I'm piggybacking 
on prophet, uh, Proverbs 31, 8 and 9 from the message says, speak up for the people who have no voice. For the rights of all, the down and outer, speak out for justice, stand up for the poor and destitute. And I think that there is a difference between politicking and actually speaking out and making sure that the politicians know that there is a voice in the church that will represent our community. And I, my vision for my church and our church is that we will have activists that will be full of prayer, full of the power of God, but not looking to take a picture with the politicians, but to sit down at the table and say, listen, we need to affect legislation and laws. Amen. We as men and women of God must instill in people not to be so entranced and in tune with politics, but be very keen on policy. Because we're supporting things mm -hmm. and wondering why the church is in the state that it's in. Well, and a lot of things that's going on right now, the church looks at it and it sees itself because we have been the driving force behind certain things being passed. And would you say that your silence is also speaking? Yes. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Silence yeah. is speaking, uh, but in a different way. Uh, silence is speaking to this generation in a different way uh, than in, in past generations. Uh, it was so uh, that there was a time where the church was in the forefront of leading anything in the community. Uh, now it is that the church is, is totally quiet about things. And, and here, here's the issue uh, that I have with, with vision uh, for today's church. The, the, the issue that I have is we have a vision for bringing people in, but we don't have a vision for going out. We don't have a vision for going into the community to catch the fish. We try to clean the fish before they're caught. And in this generation, there has to be a level of transparency to say, hey, I can relate to what you're going through. I can see what you're going through. I feel the pain that you uh, have felt because I felt it myself. But there is an answer. You don't have to stay where you are. There is an answer. You don't have to be in the predicament that you're in because there is a God who still sits high, looks low. He's able to reach way down, as my pastor said, reach, you, reach way down, pick you up, turn you around and place you on solid ground. What does that mean for today? That means he knows what you're going through and he's able to do something about it. One of the prayers of David was um, when he was praying uh, in, in his uh, warfare um, strategy. They would go and consult the Lord for a warfare strategy if they were going to fight. He used this term, he says, I do not know how to go in and to come out. Mm. To go in and to come out. And I think the church, the, 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 the church is at a place in the, the, the area of warfare in terms of uh, dealing with the community of not actually able or understanding how to go in and go out. If the worship in a church, the worship leader, if their personal worship, personal worship is two hours and the corporate setting is 20 minutes, then the one who is leading the worship have to be very, very careful that they don't bring their personal worship to the corporate setting. If they bring their personal worship to the corporate setting, they, they, they getting cranked up at an hour and a half. The church is flat dead at 20 minutes. So what happens now is they start badgering the congregation, badgering the people who are there. Now, there's a point that I want to make. When you force a person to worship, you bring in a false presence. Yes. And what we have become accustomed to is celebrating God in a false presence. Because the individuals who are supposed to partner with us in a corporate setting don't know how to go in and how to come out. There must be a word, a prophetic word from the angel of the house. Yes. You cannot run a church with just worship. And this is what's happening. Yeah, that's very powerful. So 
I want to thank you all for coming and being a part of this conversation. And um, we didn't come to get no answers. We came just to raise questions. Something about when something is articulated, something miraculous happened. I want you to take 30 seconds, each one of you, I want you to think about this. I want you to step into the future five years from now and say who I am. So if I would say who I am, I am a father to fathers in my faith. Who would you say that you are? Five years from now, prophets, project now into the future. Articulate it, who I am. I am the Just contemporary. Just say who I am. Who I am is, is the contemporary of Nathan. I wow. speak to the politician to tell him that this is wrong and this is not of God. This is not of Jesus. Great. Wow. Wow. Who I am is a transformer. Who I am is an empowerer. I empower the body of Christ to step out of the church into government, into policy, into the community, and affect culture. Who I am is an encourager. Who I am is, the, is a prophet of prayer. Um, one that can balance spirituality and reality. Great. One that realizes that this is a lonely walk. Well, let's give God a hand clap of praise. 855-730-WORD, 855-730-WORD. Like the prophet just said, we didn't come to try to give you the answers. We're having a conversation. And so in a few moments, we'll be back to continue the conversation. Are assembling a host of prophets in New York, New York, May 29th through the 30th. Register free today at MyPropheticCollege.com. Come to collaborate and participate in this two-day Q&A roundtable with some of the leading prophetic voices in the nation. Get your questions answered concerning their prophetic. Register free today at MyPropheticCollege.com. That's MyPropheticCollege.com. The Word Network is the most dynamic, the most exciting, the most empowering, and the most innovative religious network in the world. We have the music, the ministry, the revelation. And when you help people, then God gives you the joy that only He can give you. The fun, the events, and most importantly, the platforms. We're everywhere you need us to be and more. From satellites to smartphones, the Word Network is committed to broadcasting the good news of Jesus Christ all over the world. Eight five five seven three zero word. Eight five five seven three zero word. Something is happening. Folks are opening up the heavens, yes. which is above them by their seed that they're sowing. And so it was broken up into three areas, 52, 111, and 1,111 and 11 cents, okay? Uh, uh, and so 30, 60, and 100 fold. And this is, folds are not percent. Mm. It's not percent, not 30%, 60%, or 100%. Right. 30, 30, 30 fold, it's a whole fold. We'll talk about that in Clarence from New York, $52. <laughs> Micah from, D from D Washington, D.C., uh, $52. Glenn, California, $52. Barbara from Illinois, $52. And we have those that have sold the $111.11. Rose from Texas, amen. We have Tanika from Delaware. We have McCole hat from D.C. Oh, it don't stop. $111. It don't we stop. We have Greta from Florida, $111. It don't stop. We have Camille from Georgia, $111. Marsha from Texas, $111. Betty from Arkansas, $111. Leonard from L.A., $111. Nadira 
from New York, $111. Darlene from D.C., $111. Marcia from Tennessee, $111. Bertha from New Jersey. Tanya from Michigan, $111. Teresa from Maryland. Marcus from Georgia, $111. Erica from Michigan, $111. And I want to know, how come your name is not in my mouth? God wants to bless you a thousand times more. There are three people who are watching right now that 52 or 111, 11, 11 can't unlock anything for you. Your hair costs more than that. Your tie costs more than that. The shoes that you wear cost more than that. Not joking, not spoofing you, I'm telling you that the voice that you hear right now is God speaking now so that you can begin now to live your future. To live, not in, but to live your future. In a few moments, when we come back, I want those three individuals who the Lord is speaking to. One is a nurse. One is a nurse. One is a nurse. Signify it when you write. One is a nurse. Another person is a businessman. I don't know who the third person is. It's a nurse. One is a nurse. Your seed is one, 11, 11, 1,100 and $11. Eleven dollars. And 11 cents. And 11 cents. And 11 cents. There's a commercial that comes on TV where the pennies on the floor and it says a penny doesn't matter. Let me tell you something. Make sure the 11 cents is attached to it and watch God do exceedingly, abundantly above what you can think, dream, or even imagine. We're waiting for you in the name of Jesus. That God will give you the grace to release this miracle over your life and it starts now. Now, Bishop Bloomer, we have some women of God here that are with us. We have uh, my wife, Prophetess Deborah Jordan, a man, Apostle Janine Hyman, who wrecked us last time at the Prophetic College, amen. Absolutely. Um, Pastor Fandrea Lewis, Prophetess Bessie Allen, and of course, leading up this panel is Pastor Audrey Smart, amen. These are women of God and prophetesses as well, some of them in their own right. I wanna ask the women, um, um, me too, me too, me too. These are movements that are happening right now. Has women voices been mute in the church or has women voices been set free in the church or where are the voice of women in the church and ministry? Wow, Pastor Prophet, this is so powerful. I believe that the woman finds her voice is in the church, it's in God. Women voices have always been heard in the church. And dealing with these other organizations, Me Too, I feel and I think that the reason why there's a crowd, they have forgotten who they are and the place, the source where they can be fed and rise up and be everything that God has called them to be. I think the voice of the woman has always resided in the earth from the first day that God said, let us make man in our image, and that is humanity. And so the woman's voice is the divine feminine of God. Mm. What has happened in many cases is that the voice has been controlled or the voice has been suppressed, but it has never been absent in the earth. The voice of the woman is the voice of God. Ooh. You know, there's a term called, a legal term called estoppel by silence. I think many times we just don't know the names, but many of us know the names. Mama, Big Mom, <laughs> Annie Pearl, uh, Mommy. And I think now we're defining our path by a person's name. I am a woman and I cannot be quiet because I have children to raise, I have a family, I have a business, I'm in a position of a pastor, and if I say I'm in those positions, my mouth can't be shut, my hands can't stop working, my feet can't stop walking, you may not know my name, but you got to know my path. I heard a statement, um, one of the sons said that um, or you said, Master Prophet, that a silence can speak very loud. 
although our voices may have been muted, our presence has always been there. Ooh. Every church is filled with women. So I agree with Pastor that there would be no church yeah, but, 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 if but, but, not but, but. for the women. And so our time is evolving now, whereas we don't have to force ourselves into a position. We just have to be ladies and wait our turn because the prophet Joel says in the last days, he will pour out his spirit on all flesh and his sons and daughters will prophesy. So we just had to wait our turn and it's our time. Amen. 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 And I agree. And, you know, I was just thinking about even at the beginning of the Bible, the beginning of time, how women laid down the foundation and how now day uh, men have taught woman uh, who she is and what she is to do. And I was just thinking about this amazing author, which also brought me present, a woman called Adam. And you know how that even reflects the power of the women and how they were there to even hold the man up and, and, and how peace would arrive, how prosperity came and how there has to be a balance and how there has to be a balance and respect for man and woman. And now is the time the woman will receive that respect. Amen. The role of women as prophetess in the church. What would you say about the woman as a prophetess or the woman functioning as a prophet in the church? You know, uh, Master Prophet, um, a woman has the ability to contain and to carry the word. We see this with um, Mary, um, the mother of Jesus. She was able to contain and carry that word. Mm -hmm. So be, whether it's prophet or prophetess, or giving the word of the Lord, the woman of God has the ability and the power to speak power to power, as thus saith the Lord. If we look at Miriam, we look at Miriam and Aaron. When Miriam and Aaron raised their voice against Moses, mm. okay, thank you, they raised their voice against Moses, it was not Aaron who was stricken with leprosy. My God. It was Miriam because Miriam had the rank. The prophetic voice has no gender. The word of God has no gender. It has no color. It has no material. It is immaterial. And because it is immaterial, God can put himself anywhere he wants to. My God. And wherever he puts himself, <laughs> that mouth is authorized to bring heaven on earth. I think sometimes we've gotten confused with titles, and I think that's Ooh, a confusion I find in the Me Too movement. Oh. The Me Too movement looks like the corporate woman, but we forgot the Me Too woman who was the slave woman. Uh. We forgot the Me Too woman who was the woman who had to hold down everything Jesus, when her husband, my father, was in my war. My God, my God. So Woo. we're not... We're being confused right now. Yes. But we who have the word of God on the inside of us can bring that word up and remind our children. The Bible tells us older women teach. So sometimes the title of prophet may be confused with the teacher. Teach our women. Can you elaborate uh, again on the, uh, uh, you said Me Too and folks have forgotten that this goes always back to, to slavery. When we hear about Me Too, we're just hearing about something that happened 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 40 years ago. And what, what you, you're carrying us back 400 years. Yes. This is, elaborate on that for a moment. 400 years because our Me Too wasn't talked about in the corporate world because we weren't there. We were on the plantation, which was the corporation. Jesus, have mercy. That was the corporation. The cotton field was the corporation. Some of these are Fortune 500 corporations today based on what we did two and 300 years ago. Jesus. And we had Me Too, but we were able to tell my sister, pray for me, they messing with me. Yeah. Sister, pray for me. They got my children over yonder. Be all right on the other side when I get to heaven and all that kind of stuff. But let me yeah. tell you this. We sung songs. You see how corporations have documents? We had ours in song. Uh. <laughs> I'm going home on the morning train. 
The evening train. Come on, babies. We got to go. The evening train might be too late. I'm going home. Ah, yeah, ba, 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 sha. So this is powerful, Woo! Pastor Audrey, how you've taken this twist because this year, where the prophetic college is starting to rise, makes the 400th year, year That's right. that the first slave yes. in 1619 yeah. came to Jamestown My God. in Virginia. Right. We're in the 400th year anniversary. Yes. That's right. And now the question is, where is your voice now as a people? And all of these things rising up. And it's interesting because all visitations of God that I've seemingly tracked, women have been in the forefront from the civil rights way back to even Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus who was the first one to carry the word about the visitation? Woman. Woman. The woman. The woman. And with the birth of Christ, who was the first one to carry the word? The woman. The woman for nine months. So you women are the mothers of the visitation. Absolutely. You are the, you are the moms the mother of movement. Yes. Yes. Mother of movement. The mothers of the movement. And on this Mother's Day weekend, y'all are giving birth to something just like yes. Mary yes. gave yes. birth in the upper room. Yes. Amen. Giving birth to something. Yes. Amen. Y'all are giving birth to something just like Miriam. And I'm wondering if Mary and Miriam is an order of prophetesses. Because why was there a Miriam, which was a Mary with Moses, and then a Mary at the cross there with Jesus? And it wasn't just one. There were several Marys. Yes. yes. There is something um, powerful about um, what people tease women for. We're emotional. But I believe that that's prophetic because God is emotional. Whereas we think that he's only intellectual, he's only physical, he only moves, but he feels. He feels so much that he loved us to the point that he wrapped himself in his son to die for it. Now that's as emotional as I can imagine. And so I think what's amazingly prophetic about a woman is that emotionalism, which is a passion that pushes us to praise. And until we get to praise nothing happens it's sort of uh, the the document that she talked about you say in the corporate world they have what they have their their policies, they have policies. but they in have documents documents mm -hmm. and but you know, the women had documents but it was in songs and the 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 uh, a part of the old negro spirituals there was a song no more weeping and wailing dancing and crying it's also like dancing and weeping and wailing and crying and travailing all coexist together yeah. Uh, she knew when to cry and how to cry. In fact, she uh, would uh, pencil in crying time so that the, 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 the kid couldn't see the mother cry uh, about whatever the storm was. It's, it's, it, I just think that that Me Too piece from slavery is really, really something. In the season of being uh, compensated, because that's what the whole Me Too is about, where does the compensation come from for those who Me Too started in slavery. Mm -hmm. You're looking at me, Bishop Bloomer, but I hesitate because then it goes into my past. So I'm gonna go to 68 when I was a Black Panther. And I was a Black Panther because I knew my history. So I knew what happened to us. So I feel it. So my emotion may not be connected to those who don't have that experience. We have always been without money, let alone increase. We've learned how to bring it to the church. So the hairdresser was in the church. The seamstress was in the church. The cake baker was in the church. The counselor was in the church. And we need to be compensated. But I'm not going to someone else who doesn't have all that I need to compensate me. The Me Too movement doesn't have enough to compensate me. So I'm going for mine a different way. Yes. 
and I'm going for it big. And I'm going for the wealth of the wicked that's laid up for the just. I'm going for it. I can't get it from that corporate world. I've been there already. I did it. And when you get yours, save a piece of it for me. Because <laughs> <laughs> you scared me. You go get yours. We have to. Amen. We have to. Our fight, our movement is in the church. So people are talking about that's why I don't go to church. I'm waiting to hear the reason. I, that's why I don't go where? That's our institution. And we have the ability, we have the ability as prophets of God to speak yes. in the earth and move money, move wealth, move material, and move resources. All we need to do is go back to prayer and find in the spirit realm where it is, call it out, and demand it because God is a God of justice and it is our hour for justice. Oh, it's going to happen. 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 And Ecclesiastes and chapter soon. number three says to everything there's a time and a season and a purpose under the heavens. The latter part of the text says that which is now has already been, already been. and that which is to come has already passed and God requires the past now. And you just spoke that word that ushered us into that moment. Let's give these powerful women a great big hand clap. Amen. Well, we're going to go. 855730 word, 855730 word. Now, you're sitting there and you're contemplating in your mind whether you should sow. Listen, you missed an opportunity. A portal opened up and it was raining on seed. We're going to come back. This is your moment to call in right now and put a demand sow a seed and place a demand on the seed and i feel led of the holy spirit to slip out and go into the call center to pray for some of these folk who are going to sow seed tonight in the name of jesus i don't normally do that but i sense in my spirit I love, that i, I need to connect with you because you are about to receive blessings from stuff that has been taken away from you and i want you to know that your daddy left you loaded this is your season for increase We'll be back in a moment. All right. Bishop Bernard Jordan and Bishop George Bloomer are assembling a host of prophets in New York, New York, May 29th through the 30th. Register free today at mypropheticcollege.com. Come to collaborate and participate in this two-day Q&A roundtable with some of the leading prophetic voices in the nation. Get your questions answered concerning their prophetic. Register free today at MyPropheticCollege.com. That's MyPropheticCollege.com. The Word Network is the most dynamic, the most exciting, the most empowering, and the most innovative religious network in the world. We have the music, the ministry, the revelation. And when you help people, then God gives you the joy that only He can give you. The fun. The events. And most importantly, the platforms. We're everywhere you need us to be and more. From satellites to smartphones. The Word Network is committed to broadcasting the good news of Jesus Christ all over the world. Eight five five seven three zero word eight five five. This has been. This is an exciting. It, it's an exciting night, and something is happening out there in the atmosphere. Whatever God orders, He pays for. Yes, He does. And when God prophetically makes a promise to you. How he does it ain't your business. The only thing you need to focus your attention on is that he spoke it. And if he spoke it, he's going to bring it to pass. 855-730-WORD, 855-730-WORD. Uh, 34, 34, D from Illinois, uh, Laura from New York City, Sharonda from New York City. Amen. I have Frida. Those that have done the $111.11 seat, for those of you just tuning in, 855-730-WORD. Frida from North Carolina. Sandra from Texas. Cliff from PA. I want you to call, call now and get your seed in the ground. Now, Bishop Bloomer, we have another panel coming up here, but the phones are ringing. Yes. Are you getting ready to go in the back? I'm going into the back 
and I'm going to have a few of the young prophets. To, some of the prophets. To, My some, wife is going to join you, prophet prophets, Deborah. Yes, yes. Prophet Joshua is going to yes. join you. Amen. Yes. And uh, we're going to have Prophet De Cruz to join you. Yes. They're going to prophesy to people on the phone. They're prophesy to people on the phone. I'm going there to. I'm going there to. No, are you going to be prophesying? No, I ain't going to be prophesying. What I'm going there to do? <laughs> what I'm going there to do? I'm going there to release you to do what God told me that you're supposed to do. No, and no, two no, of no, you no, just no. obeyed God. All right, one thousand one hundred and eleven dollars and eleven cents. Barbara from California, and Florine from uh, from from Memf from uh, Maryland. Maryland. Uh, 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 one thousand one hundred eleven dollars. There's three others right now that 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 need, well one other that need to obey God in this particular moment, and so I'm speaking that to you right this moment. Get your seed in the ground. It's going to raise you to a level that you've never been to before in the name of Jesus. I want to say one more time, this is a powerful, extraordinary night. From Passover, the things that have passed over from you, to Pentecost, God giving you a language to unlock destiny in your life. That the words that you used to use no longer works now. He's going to give you the linguistics, the language to unlock your future. This is the season. Get your seed into the ground. Amen. Well, we have here um, Prophet Luther McKinstry. You know, he's special. Because <laughs> he's the one that has pulled this group together. Amen. We have um, Pastor Michael Fisher, Mike P Bishop Eric Mitchell. Where is Bishop Eric Mitchell? Oh, there you are. <laughs> I was wondering, <laughs> amen, and um, Prophet Caleb Spurlock, blessings to all of you, amen. And um, I, Prophet McKinstry, tell us why this panel and what's gonna be talked about in the Prophetic College coming up in two weeks. Well, one thing that is very important to me is accountability when it deals with the prophetic. You have a lot of prophets who are not accountable and and don't know how to answer to leadership. Uh, I never forget one time, and, and I was preaching all across around the world, and I never forget one time when my mother, uh, sometimes she had me come home and speak, and I'd come on speak, and she would critique me. And one day, it was a powerful move of God at church. People was getting saved and hit the altar. She called me. She said, son, phenomenal service. She said, you had a wonderful word. She says, but you're not my son. Mm. And I said, wow, what you mean? She said, the ones in the church got more my spirit than you do. She says, you picked up something while you was out there. Come home and sit. I said, but mom, they, they, they're advertising. They got me out there. I got places to go. She says, either you cancel or I cancel. <laughs> she said, come and sit for about a month. And I, and I came home and I sat. Of course, I'm going to obey because she, she showed me how I don't operate under my anointing. I operate under the anointing of the house that I come from. And, and so and so so they have to understand that and they have to understand about accountability and credibility as well and so uh, on the third week anybody knows that goes to worship center in toledo you're gonna eat some carpet doing worship service and and i got up off the floor on the third week she hit me on my leg she said okay son you can go out now and but you have some who who don't listen to anyone you can't correct them you can't say anything to them but the thing is, other churches are bringing them to the church because they can raise some money. They can draw a crowd. But they allow that spirit to come out on in a church as well. Wow. Okay, so men of God, what would you say to us about the importance of accountability in the prophetic and around the prophetic? Um, I, I would say that it's very important that you have accountability, you have someone to answer to. Everybody has someone that they had to submit to before they were released. That's biblical. Um, it's vital because you need someone to be able to critique what you're saying, be able to see if you're operating in flesh or you're operating in the spirit, be able to call you in to certain things that maybe you say that is out of the wrong interpretation. Um, but also, though, I think it's important that in this time, because I kind of represent the millennials a little bit. That you is represent important. the millennials? Just, just, a, just a little <laughs> bit. Just a little bit. And it's important, though, to bring out, because I'm a PK, I'm a pastor's son, and my father's 95 now, and so it's been kind of hard for me to find spiritual covering because there's a spirit of competition. And so 
just as important it is for us to be accountable, I think it's also important that people that are in the seat of being fathers, that they need to start being accountable to the anointing that's on them to cover people properly. Right. And to be able to call us into accountability, but at the same time, not be a hypocrite when they do. Amen. Thank you. You know, Bishop, you cannot have the transferring of anointing without accountability. In 2 Kings chapter 5, we see where Naaman does obey the prophet Elisha, and then Gehazi runs after him to receive gifts that the prophet refused. Mm. And because he was not accountable to his leadership, he was smote with leprosy. That anointing that was on Elisha had to go in the grave because it couldn't be transferred. And we know that it went in the grave because when a dead man was put into his tomb, his bones brought that dead man back to life. There can be no transfer of the anointing without accountability. Wow, powerful. Archbishop, I believe that as we have to not be myoptic in our thinking and our approach as it relates to fatherless generations that we are approaching upon now. We are in a fatherless generation. Uh, we have wonderful orators, but sorry husbands, sorry fathers. We know how to prophesy, we know how to preach, we know how to lay hands, but we're sorry as a father. And before we get to the ecclesia of the church, we have to learn how to be men at home. And so that's one of the problems that we see. Uh, you know, as a former athlete, you know, when I was born, I looked like I'm a massive protoplasm of a man now. But when I was born, I looked like my parents. But when I die, I look like my decisions. And so oftentimes, we make the wrong choices by platform and by stage. If you have a name, I'm going to follow you. But the wisdom comes from the 90-year-old grandfather. The wisdom came from my grandfather, who served in the church 60 years. And most of the time... He didn't allow me to preach. I was a great preacher, but he said, I don't want to hear you until you learn how to be a husband to your wife. I don't want to hear you until you stop. Don't have babies around this city where I raise and believe in holiness and you run around here preaching. So now we are in a spiritual bastard position. And because the men and young men are raising themselves, they never feared a man. And they never have the sense of accountability, so they're raising themselves, and now they're doing what they want to do, and they're saying what they want to say. You know, when I grew up, by the time you got home, if you did something wrong, the neighbor would whip you, your That's uncle right. would whip you. Before you even got to your father, you probably had three whippings. That's right. But now, the fathers are acting like the sons, right. and the sons are acting like the daughters. And we are in a mix, and I, didn't, I, I, I meant what I just said. And so we got to understand that we, we have to have a paradigm shift. If we get the home front straight, then you'll see a paradigm shift in the church. You kind of had Bishop Jordan's mouth just drop for a minute. You can't, you got to, you can't have him element surprise like that. I love the analogy. So, um, um, Prophet Caleb, you're the youngest one up there. What would you say about the role of, uh, of accountability? Well, bless you, uh, Master Prophet. Accountability to me is, as Prophet McKinstry said, it's credibility. Everywhere that you go, you have to be accountable to someone. My credibility is connected to who I'm accountable to. Um, the name of the person that you're, cred that you're accountable to goes before you. That name precedes you. Anywhere I ever get the chance to minister, that name goes before me. Bishop Morton goes before me. Master Prophet Jordan goes before me. Those names go ahead of me because I'm accountable to these individuals. So let's just, okay, so you mentioned Bishop Morton. You've been with Bishop Morton for how many years? I am 26 years old, so I've been with Bishop Morton my entire life. Wow. Now, before you could connect with me, who did you get permission from? I had to get permission from Bishop Paul Morton and, and Pastor Deborah Morton before I could ever be connected to you. Right. So there's a relationship. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. He did not pick a father or a spiritual mentor that was different from a relationship from his father. What happens when spiritual sons pick their father's enemies to mentor them? Chaos. Chaos. Um, betrayal, that, that, that is 
running rampant, unfortunately, within our generation because our generation is chasing fame, platform, and they don't want to be discipled. They don't want to submit. And I tell the young adults when I say it, I'm like, well, you're usually mad when people that have gray hair say it, <laughs> but I, I don't. So what are you going to say to me? And the truth of the matter is our generation, they don't want to submit. And so what they do is they go to any person that is going to offer them an opportunity to be on here. Any person that, that offer them an opportunity to be at the next conference, to be a part of the next hashtag, not knowing that they are positioning themselves for the wrath of God. And, and, and see, and then, and then what ends up happening is then they going to end up reaping what they sow because all the thing they're doing is producing the seed that they sow in any ways to begin with. That's just like when a person end up leaving the church because they're mad because they didn't want to start a church. All they're going to have is a mad church because they're going to attract the same type of spirit from when they also left. Kind of bitter. That, that is an insurrection spirit from the spirit of Absalom. That's the Absalom spirit that has been released unto the earth. And I'm telling you right now, I believe this, and I believe a lot of things, and I, I'm so appreciative for my small bit time as a pharmaceutical enhancer on the streets, <laughs> uh, a drug dealer, because the I streets teach you, <laughs> right, right. the streets teach you things that the church never did. You can't sit down at the table with your father's enemies and let someone hear about it, or they find your head in the in the, in the swimming and your body somewhere else. And so it teaches us loyalty. And we don't see that in the church anymore, all right? A lot of times we inherit our father's enemies, but we have to stay in prayer, like Bishop said, and we have to be accountable because we are in a fatherless generation. Wow. Because there's no power of communication that's happening in the church. Wow. So Bishop Bloomer brought up early about the worship. I want to ask you in the panel, do you think, Absalom is starting to lead the worship in our temples. Oh God, oh, oh, oh God, yes. I grew up, thank you Jesus, my father who, like I said, is 95. So I, I, I'm blessed to have the old school in me. And back in the day, in my back in the day, you were not allowed to be the praise and worship leader at this church and then be singing in the choir at the other church the next week. You weren't allowed to do that. And what's happening now is that no one is being led by the spirit. Everyone is being led by opportunity. And we have to do something about the pimps that are in place that we are calling prophets. And see, a pimp will find anybody that they know that they can put on the corner to bring them some money. And the people that are in place that we're calling prophets are just people that are in power positions that are looking for any celebrity, any artist, any great orator to put them in place just to draw them a crowd and just to be able to bring them an offering. And it is destroying the church. But you know, Bishop, we have created this culture. Yes, we have. We in have. the church. And that culture was created by us allowing people to come into power positions who have not grown up in holiness. You can't, you, you can come in and teach, but you cannot really teach what you have not experienced. I mean, just because you just got out of jail and God saved you in jail does not mean it's time for you to be a pastor because you, you don't know God enough to teach other than the culture where you met him. And if you met him in jail, you'll teach as far as your prison ministry. You we have to have some... Incarceration. Yes. You have to have some roots in God yes. to be able to teach and lead people. And we have a bunch of people in charge who are not really ready. They're novice. Yes. So... Can you bring correction without relationship? So, well, you got to look at this. He talked about the pimps. You talked about came correction. 
how can you bring correction when the pimps, you can't, if you talk about the pimps, you can't forget about the prostitutes. The prostitute is somebody who gives something for money that ought to be given out of love. I tell people all the time, I, I don't preach for money because, because it's just the love that I have for it. I, I don't preach to live. I live to preach. And so in, until the correction dealing with the, the pimps and the prostitutes in the pulpit and the pews, then, then how, can you, how can you deal with it? Because in, in everything centered around that money. Wow. I, I, the, spell, I, I, the, 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 the spell is in the music. Right. So let's go back to that. The, the, down the, to Babylon. The, 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 the spell is in the music. Yes. It's the pipers. Woo! So, so, ah, Eli Bosha. So has the spirit of the Pied Piper entered into the church? Yes, it has. Well, I, I believe, I believe it. Well, I know a lot of spirits is into the church, but the gates of hell should not prevail. Yes. We talk so much about what's happening in the church. We don't talk about the things and the power of God. We, we're missing the power of God that moment, that season. But I, um, our bishop and bishop, I believe that we are missing a key component, and that's accountability for the church. The black church, within a year, raises $14 billion. More than the major late baseball, more than the NBA. The question is to our hurting sons and daughters in those Crips, Bloods, Gangsters, Vice Lords out there, where's the money? No one's being held accountable to it. They're bleeding, they're hurting, they're crying. And then they see the preacher go down the street with a Bugatti. Something is wrong. Where are the checkers? Where are the checkers that the fathers that would say, listen, you're going too far? Are we too scared? I believe that some people need to be silent. In basketball, there's a starting five, but there's substitutes. I believe this is the year of the substitute, where many voices have sold their souls out to famine and money, but I believe there's some substitutes that's coming in that's going to speak the purity and holiness and virtue of God without compromising. It's yeah. too much compromising in the church, and it starts with leadership. Well, I, I, I also want to say real quick two things to answer your question that you said, can there be correction without uh, relationship? I think absolutely because correction comes from authority. So if we start having the fathers and the mothers, let's not leave the women out, the fathers and the mothers of the faith operating in spiritual authority, authority. it will check you. But most people who are trying to correct don't have no endorsement from God. And so they're just operating out of flesh and being angry. To the Pied Piper thing, it's our fault. We are, we are supporting these singers, we are paying for their albums, and every pastor, prophet, bishop, when we know that these artists are out of order, they shouldn't be at any conference, they shouldn't be singing nothing, and that's the I, only way we're gonna get rid of I, that Pied Piper spirit. I agree with you, but when, I, when I'm referring to the Pied Piper, I'm not referring to the entertainers or the gospel yeah. singers. The mysticism of the, the music. I'm referring to the conductors of it, the preachers, <laughs> who are using the music to mystify the, that's what I'm referring to. Well, I agree with them a thousand percent. If they're not living right I, there, I, I agree with that. I'm with you. I'm not against that at all. But when I talk about the Pie Piper, that's who, that, 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 that's who I'm talking about. Where there is a mouse, there's mice. mice. And so I want you to look prophetically at this right now as we speak. Are we in an age, because watch this, the prophet speaks of times that oftentimes that you can't see, but it's happening. And over the fullness of time, you'll see, and we gotta wrap this up. Could it be, and I'll throw this out as a question, and we'll, it, it will come back up again at another moment, that the Pied Piper, being the bishop, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, whoever's heading into the pulpit, is leading the children away from authority by fighting the traditions of the elders. That's what I mean when I say Pied Pipers. And the spirit has entered into the church, the fathers against the sons, the sons against the fathers, the mothers against the daughters. And what we're seeing here is not a Malachi 4, 5, and 6, turning the hearts of the children to the fathers and the hearts of the fathers to the children, but they're prophesying the sons away from the fathers. My Lord. 
right. and it's out of order. So when I hear Pied Piper, that's 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 what I hear. Just like, and we haven't spoken about that, but that's that's what I hear. I'm not so much like the music that is playing. I'm talking about the rhythm of deception mm -hmm. that is being spoken. And they're using the bait as the lure. In other words, it's called sneezers in marketing. You say, achoo, and someone catches the cold and catches the fever and spread it. They're hiring your artists to spread the virus. And there's a viral situation happening in the church. And more on that as we rush towards 2020. I think we got to go to a commercial. 855-730-WORD. Listen, the heavens has opened up. There is a 15-minute portal that just opened up for seed sowing. Let's rebuke this piper that has come and has changed the rhythm of your giving and has robbed your harvest away from you. In Jesus' name. We'll be back in a moment. Bishop Bernard Jordan and Bishop George Boomer are assembling a host of prophets in New York, New York, May 29th through the 30th. Register free today at MyPropheticCollege.com. Come to collaborate and participate in this two-day Q&A roundtable with some of the leading prophetic voices in the nation. Get your questions answered concerning their prophetic. Register free today at MyPropheticCollege.com. That's MyPropheticCollege.com. The Word Network is the most dynamic, the most exciting, the most empowering, and the most innovative religious network in the world. We have the music, the ministry, the revelation. And when you help people, then God gives you the joy that only He can give you. The fun the events, and most importantly, the platforms. We're everywhere you need us to be and more. From satellites to smartphones, the Word Network is committed to broadcasting the good news of Jesus Christ all over the world. Tomorrow about this time, things are going to change. Prophetically, there is a shifting in the atmosphere and things are changing right now, right this moment. 855-730-WORD, 855-730-WORD. What we just experienced, what we just felt, I mean, it's like going through my bones right now. Change? is now. Change is now. 855-730-WORD. 855-730-WORD. I want you to give God praise in this room right now. Just take a quick moment and bless the Lord in this house, in the name of Jesus. Give him praise. Magnify his name. I said magnify his name. Just a quick second. Give him praise. Magnify him. He's worthy of the praise, and he's going to destroy yokes in the name of Jesus. 855 word Your seed of 52 or $111.11 or $1,111.11 needs to be placed in the soil. Ah, there is a package that we're releasing from Passover to Pentecost. It's on the screen right now. It's on the screen right now, from Passover to Pentecost. And uh, as you sow this seed, you're gonna receive two books, a vial of consecrated prayer oil and a prayer cloth as a point of contact when we will touch and agree. I'm believing the Lord for a miracle in your life. And the God of our fathers shall bless us a thousand times more. This is your season. This is your moment. This is your moment. 
I sense the Lord in this place right now. Have your way, Jesus. Things are going to change. Things are going to change. Things are going to change. Oh, Lord, hey. things are going to change. My God, things are going to change. Eight five five seven three zero word. Eight five five seven three zero word. The portal just opened up. Fifteen minutes. Sow your seed. Place a demand on the seed and watch God perform a miracle in your life. I remember when I was dying from that cancer and I was four hundred and fourteen pounds, conjective heart failure and diabetes on 10 different medications when I called my mother and I said, Ma, the doctor said I'm going to die. She said, boy, I'm about to hang the phone up on you because you're a hypocrite. You're telling all those people what God can do and you don't believe in the God that you're telling them about. She said, get a seed, sow the seed and place a demand on the seed. I took a seed that God had given me. I got a royalty check from my publishers that was $8,881. I turned it over, signed it and sold it into my spiritual father's television ministry and I'm healed, delivered, and set free by the power of God right now. Do not tell me that the seed does not have power in itself. Be determined to obey. This is the moment for you to obey. A sacrifice is never measured by how much you give, it's measured by how much you have left. And there has to be some agitation, and it has to hurt. So sow the seed and watch God perform the miracle in your life, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Bishop Bloma, this is the final panel in this prophetic college. Oh, not no. Finished. This is going so too fast. We need another hour. Uh, we need to come back before Pentecost. Yes, we will. We, we, yeah. we got to be back. Yeah. We have Apostle Janine, who you all have heard from before, but we have a longtime friend, Bishop Leo Lewis. I mean, I preached at this man's church back. I've met him through um, Prophetess Carolyn Harrell. The late prophetess Carolyn wow. Harrell. Wow, I remember. The powerful woman of God. I remember. And um, this Bishop Leo Lucy, his crazy faith, amen. Um, then um, prophet, apostle Dwayne Hardin, amen. Um, great, powerful, prophetic voice there out of Georgia. Um, Bishop Kevin L. Long, amen, who we're looking forward to being at his place in the first week of June. And then back, prophet Luther McKinstry. <laughs> And I kind of save this at the end because I want us to, to look at this from an apostolic lens. Is a prophetic college necessary and why? Open the floor to you. Thank you. I think it is necessary. When I read the scriptures in those stories, I look for keys patterns and codes oh. and I look for divine order St. Paul says that God has set first in the church second can never be first oh. third can never be first fourth can never be first I think the problem is that Second doesn't have the grace first has. Third doesn't have the grace that first has. Mm -hmm. Fourth doesn't have the grace that first has. God sets first in it. the ecclesia, the church. This is government. Yes. God has a kingdom, a standing army, resources, a constitutional government, and he puts government upon his shoulders. Mm. I think that the prophetic is out of order because first has not been recognized. Ooh. If anything needs government, it is the mouth of the prophet. Mm. Even prophets must learn to judge themselves, yes. to be subject to themselves. And they have to be subject to the measure of rule that other prophets have. Wow. Now, I think it's Acts 12 where the Bible says that, <laughs> the scripture says that, Hallelujah. that Peter, that James had been beheaded. 
So now there's been the uh, decapitation of the beheading of the apostles. Then Peter was put in prison. Mm-hmm. Then the imprisonment of the apostles. Judas hung himself. Mm-hmm. Then there's the hung apostle mm-hmm. because he got the spirit of mammon on him. Mm-hmm. And so then there's the castrated apostle whose balls have been cut off. My God. An apostle that has no balls has no seed. <laughs> when God. there's no seed, there's no future. When there's no future, there's not the rationing of genes. <laughs> Generation means the rationing of genes. So the whole order yeah, has to be brought back. Yes, God will not come back. The restitution of all things will not happen. Jesus will remain in heaven Woo. until the restitution of all, of all things. And all things me, not just prophets and teachers and evangelists, but proton first in the church. Mm. Government, foundation, pattern, pater, where we get father, sustainer, and source. Mm. And so prophets must understand as wonderful as they are, they must honor first because trying to position themselves in a place of foundation, even though we know the apostles and the prophets are are, are twin giftings, but first must be honored. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Let me uh, piggyback off wow, of the Wow, 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 wow. That when we talk about first, and I saw this sitting in Africa, the Lord said to me to look at the natural, and he would teach me spiritual things. And as I watched seagulls and birds, I watched their formation. Their formation was not hierarchical. That is another spirit. Their formation was one in the front, and they were spread triangularly. So when we talk about the apostle being first, it is a position not of hierarchy on top. It is a position where we are out in the front. We are the proton. We are the prototype. And so we must be positioned properly in the front so that everything else behind us is in order. And it is our job to restore the church back to its holy apostolic roots. We need a college so that, number one, we can purge the leaven out of the prophetic. Number two, we can bring proper order back to the church. And the Bible says that when he ascended, he gave gifts unto uh, man. It didn't say he gave gifts unto the church. We are gifts given to anthropos, to the world. And so we need a college because we've already said justice is coming. We've already said the restitution of all things is in place. We've already said that we're calling the wealth of the wicked back uh, to its proper location. And in order to do that, everything must be in the order in which God originally intended it. We must have a college. But there must be first things first. Yes. I am. I, uh, I'm glad they're speaking. They kind of alluded to everything that I would say. So I want to use an example. Um, the proton is where we get the word prototype. Mm-hmm. The uh, SUV that we're so familiar with, you know, we got the Escalade and all of these vehicles, started with a blazer. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It wasn't the Cherokee Jeep. It was a blazer. Yeah. The yeah. blazer was, the purpose was to present righteousness and justice. There's something very powerful about, about the word righteousness and justice because we often fight for justice, but we forget righteousness. And those two must be married. That word and is a hendiadis, meaning it joins the two together in marriage. So there cannot be uh, justice without righteousness, nor righteousness without justice. Righteousness alone produces legalism. Justice produces alone produces lawlessness. So there has to be the two joined together. When the blazer came, the blazer opened the pathway for the Escalade. The Escalade would, did not have a legal pathway without a blazer. Gotcha. And so there has to be a door opening. There has to be something that blazes the trail. 
And then the prophetic creates the sight to make sure we're going down the right track. So there must be one with a, a machete just tearing it down and, and making a way and producing law for the following. Because whatever, um, whatever is birth needs law. And a lot of times we operate prophetically without law. So that's why we can have young prophets who will go and just do illegal things in the spirit using their gift. Wow. May, may I say something? Prophet. Yes. Wow. I look for keys and codes and patterns. Yes. Jesus is the pattern son. Mm -hmm. He said, I do always the things that please my father. I and my father are one. And so I think that judgment comes upon fatherless sons. As great as Timotheus was, he had a heavy spirit of the matriarch, a grandmother and a mother. Mm -hmm. But his father, in terms of physicality, was the Greek. He had synthetic thought patterns. It's a paradigm it's in the DNA. He, 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 and so God now sends this Jew into this young half breech life to, to temper, to mitigate the heavy matriarch spirit and bring the spirit of a father. A woman's legs are the rite of passage for a baby. Yes. A man's hands are the rite of passage for manhood. Come on now. And so I think that we have babies that have come out of wombs, but have never legally gone into manhood because of a father's hands. And you know, when, when, when you look at that, when a son comes forth, Within eight days, he's got to be cut by his father. And if you can't show me the cuts of your father, That's right. then you have no accountability. There is no account, which means that it pleased the father to bruise the son. If you're a son of mine, you'll be able to show the world the bruises I've given you in order to bring you into covenant. That's right, because... Paul said that circumcision doesn't avail. But as a public demonstration of this yeah. father-son paradigm, mm. Timothy submitted his seed instrument to the hands of his dad. Mm. And he clipped him in his manhood, but he re in his boyhood, but he released him into, into his manhood. Yeah. You know, um, Apostle said something that is powerful. Um, she said that when she was watching the birds, the seagulls, um, she paid attention to that one that was out front. And then one wasn't elevated above the others, but they all fall, fell into formation. Uh, the seagull, the, the, um, the, uh, the, the bird that is in the front is referred to as the wind cutter. He's the strongest one. The wind is coming, he's, he's cutting the wind and evenly distributing the wind. So the other birds are following the track of the wind that was cut. And at the end, there are two larger birds whose jobs are watches because when the other birds get fatigued and fall out, they scoop down and bring them up. So we have those young people who are in the body of Christ who are seriously gifted, have followed the track, but fell out of formation and there was no one there to scoot them back up or to call them back into formation. Wow. Um, Bishop Kevin, what would you like yes, to say? Now, I think this is really interesting. The, the question was, uh, why the need for a prophetic college? And I think it, it, the church is in a very interesting place and I think we're in a place that we've never been historically mm -hmm. uh, especially especially in the 20th and 21st century mm -hmm. uh, Israel had been in the wilderness for some time and Jethro says to Moses Moses you're wearing yourself out 
you need to fix this. So he says, here's what I need you to do. I need you to get elders, and I need you to separate those elders. And God speaks to him, and God says, take them outside of the camp, and I'm going to take of your spirit to place on them. Bible says that when that happens, there are two in the camp, Eldad and Medad who are also prophesying. And Joshua comes back to Moses and says to Moses, these two are prophesying. Yeah. And Moses says, that really ain't a problem. I wish that all of Israel were prophets. Here's my point. Because the church is in a wilderness now and the prophetic voice is so needed, we need prophetic order. And so we need, we need the apostolos, if you will. Moses, Moses is the Old Testament pattern of a New Testament apostle. Mm -hmm. And we need people in place to authenticate the voices. Yeah. We need people in places to say to the voices, this is what you say, this is how you say. Yes. In order for us to move through this wilderness to the promise that the 21st ch century church is on its way to. Wow. Be because because Bishop, the prophetic college we're also able to be able not to only cultivate, but also activate as well. Because you got a lot of them have not been cultivated at all. A lot of them have not been cultivated and activated. Uh, um, Prophet Eric Mitchell, I spent time where I came to sit with him every week while he cultivated my gift to take my gift to another place. I was gifted, but I, I came and seek someone else where he cultivated my gift in order for me to be activated with Prophet Eric Mitchell. And so I, I said that in, in, with the Prophetic College, we're going to be doing some proper teaching and some things to be able to, because you got a lot of people who really call themselves prophets who really can't see for the camera that's in front of me right about now. Uh, um, that, 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 that could <laughs> prophesy, could fit anything, anybody in this room. And in other words, they just do this fishing stuff. So, so we need, we need to set some order in that and we need some proper training and some proper teaching. Bishop, let me, let me add, let me also add, I, I was talking to you about two years ago about doing some things at the university. Yes. And one of the key elements that you and I agreed upon was academia. A lot of people don't know that this gifting, these giftings carry academia with them. That academia will put you in a position of intellect and spirit. Yes. Logos and spirit. Makes you effective, bring and producing, giving birth to rhema, things that can produce life. The, somebody has said that we can speak that word, put that word out there. But if you don't even know the academia of releasing words and how molecules are formed and certain things like that, then we end up uh, doing something shooting in the dark. So again, with this kind of uh, college, I believe academia would be important. I think it's going to be necessary to bring forth an understanding of why a father. You know, a lot of people saying, I don't need no spiritual father. Well, they don't understand the academia of it. They don't understand the intellect. They don't see the, the, the foundation of it. And so these things are, be, are, are what's necessary in producing such a college, not just to gather people together to uh, kiss the ring, so to speak, but to bring people together who can understand the heart of God. Yes, and it's about if there was a ring to kiss tonight, I would go over there and kiss Leo Lewis' ring. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here's a there no, if there, and, 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 and he comes without a ring, so I can't kiss it. But you can kiss his feet. I'll do that <laughs> with your lips. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but this is how powerful this is. I would do that. Yes, this is how powerful this is to have fathers and mothers of the faith sharing and that we're coming into an age now that the healing is going to be intergenerational. We, we got to acknowledge. Yeah, we got to acknowledge and we, 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 we're all out of time. What a night tonight. Let's bless the Lord. They're calling the windows of heaven are open. The windows of heaven are open and the uh, seeds are being sown and released in the, in, in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. uh, we have $52 seed, Carol from New York, <laughs> May from North Carolina, Verna from Michigan, Margaret from Texas, 
D from Illinois, $52 C. Lori from New York, $52 C. Sandra from New York, $52 C. Clarence from New York, $52 C. McCole from DC, $52. Gwen from California, $52. Martha from Tennessee, $52. Gloria from Michigan, $52 C. The phone lines are jammed, and those of you uh, who are trying to get in do not allow a busy signal to uh, hinder you or block you from being able to sow this seed that the Lord has laid upon your heart to sow tonight. The Prophetic College is now established and it's here to stay. Nothing whatsoever the Lord does, he does it forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing can be taken away from it. Amen. We're getting ready to see God in ways that are unbelievable. We want to thank Sonia for the $111 seat and 11 cents, and Janice and Bobby from Pennsylvania, Margie from South Carolina, Manju from Virginia, Geraldine from Georgia, Diane from Georgia, Yolanda from New York, Georgia from Georgia, L L Louisiana, Annie from Illinois, and Bobby from Pennsylvania. We'll see you in New York City. New York City. And listen, this, the, the, the prophetic college is not about making no new pope or anything like that. We coming together having a conversation and whoever the smoke rises on, that's what thus saith the Lord. What you saw here today is organic, authentic. It is a move of God. Pray for the success of this college. Amen. I know we're going to be successful. And go to MyPropheticCollege.com, MyPropheticCollege.com, and go there to MyPropheticCollege.com. Tomorrow night we're going to be with um, our Bishop Eric Mitchell right here in, Mich in Michigan. Amen. God bless the man of God for welcoming the Prophetic College. 10 a.m. tomorrow, you and I. Day until and night. 4 o'clock. Yes. And then tomorrow night. And, and then the end of the month we'll be again, the Prophetic College will be meeting. Rushing towards 2020 where we are going to have 2020 vision and seeing the future. We're going back to Africa. And I'll see you before the summer's out with another one of these prophetic gathering women, young prophets, all of us coming together. Sing, my son, sing, sing, sing. Okay, this one, you cannot, you cannot be sitting down because I'm taking you to Africa. Come on, Bishop. I need you to move your feet in this one. We call it the leg walk. Ha, ha. He says, my hands, my feet, my whole body, everybody, all that I am, we sing hallelujah. I see you. Come on, Bishop. Get the left walk going. Get it going. My, come on. Come on. You got to do that. Come on. Come on. Oh, my God. We sing hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Everybody, I need to see you get the left walk going. Who keeps blessing you? Jesus. I want to hear you Jesus, stop. Jesus, Who keeps blessing you? Jesus. Come on, come on. Jesus, Jesus, Who keeps healing you? Jesus. Come on, come on. Jesus, Jesus, Who keeps delivering you? Jesus. Come on, come on. Jesus, Jesus, All right, Bishop. Let's walk. Let's walk. Come on. Come on, come on. My God. I see you. You got it going. 